Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with another dose of DCS World, and today the F 86F Saber Jet. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this bad boy started in an attempt to down an AI MIG. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. Keyword attempt. <laughs> Ground power is now on. Engine master switch on. Hold the battery down for a few seconds. Toggle up. Gonna go ahead and close the canopy. Control C. Or you can use the switch there if you want to do it with your mouse, as this is a click pit. Uh, oxygen flow all the way. Gonna hit the home key once to unlock the throttle. And I believe we're monitoring this gauge. It'll settle on four. Then we'll hit the home key again, putting it into idle. And then that'll settle back down there as well. I do have a physical throttle, but you need to unlock it via the home key or whatever bind you so choose. Also make sure the flaps are up for takeoff. I close that speed brake. You'll see that moving there. And we're back. So we can now shut off ground power. Backslash F8, F2, F2. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now off. Good to go. This thing is pretty easy to start up. And I will say, if you want to fly a jet and you're coming out of World War II aircraft, this is a fantastic transition point. A lot of fun flying this, and the MiG, if you're interested in that. Okay, I've not flown the MiG, I don't have the MiG, but uh, from what everybody tells me, the both the MiG-15 and the F-86 are very enjoyable. I know I've been loving this thing. Okay. Quick and simple taxi out. In field, one, one. Request takeoff. I'm gonna put my feet on the brakes. Throttle up to 100%. And gently letting off the brakes. Not all the way, because we want to keep this thing centered. Once it hits a certain speed. I'll be able to pull up. Okay, letting off those brakes. go. Gear up. Notice how the seat changes positions there.
Okay, let's see if I can find that MIG. I'm not great with the mission editor. I understand some of the basics. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm more worried about fighting AI than whether I placed them incorrectly. I will give the aircraft a little bit of trim as well. I'm going to arm these guns. Uh, I obviously have the, uh, the radar gun sight as well as fixed. Admittedly, not 100% on how the radar gun sight works. But I haven't spent a lot of time with it either. Sometimes the old ways are the best. Now, in preparing to engage this threat, uh, I have two options in terms of visibility. I can choose to leave target markers on or I can turn them off. And I notice that this has become a topic of great debate. Uh, some flight sim games or aircraft games in general have a scaling uh, feature where at a distance the aircraft will be scaled up so as to be able to spot it. And this game does not, which seems to upset quite a few people. Now, I don't really know where I stand on this. Um, I have great vision in the real world, but yes, I do have trouble spotting aircraft in this title. It seems like sometimes they just disappear. Um, but I'm also playing at 2560 by 1440, and it can be difficult to spot things. And generally, the higher resolution that you were playing at, the more difficult it is, and uh, that means you'll be at a disadvantage versus somebody on 1080p, for example. Now, some multiplayer servers have additional mods that help with spotting. But on the flip side, the game does feature target markers, if you so choose. So it's kind of a strange argument. It's like, on one hand, people want aircraft scaling, but you could also turn on target markers. But most servers choose to not do that. So what's the better way to go, and is there a compromise that can be made Scaling isn't realistic, but being able to zoom in like this isn't either, but that's a feature of the game. I guess at what point do you take your simulator and say, well, maybe we need to sacrifice something for the sake of gameplay? I don't know. I really don't know where I stand on that. I'd like to hear the opinions of others. Um, because, yeah, the most difficult thing to me is is spotting and identifying aircraft not that that wasn't difficult in reality but in the real world you're dealing with human eyesight and realistic lighting conditions not that they don't attempt to mimic that here anyways let's try to find this son of a gun well we're still searching for that mig but uh get a load of this I believe that's where they conduct uh, bomb tests. It's pretty sweet looking. It's almost like the surface of the moon. But if you think about it, being all the way up here at this altitude, it's uh, very Martian. Okay, we finally found this son of a gun. I think he's flying away from me. I want to watch my speed because it's really easy to overshoot one of these aircraft. But as you can see, I've got the target markers turned on. We can turn it off, shift F10, and you know, that's what you're left with. You can use a zoom, and I can still see him. Um, 
would I have been able to find him without this? Or map functionality or knowing that I gave him a specific waypoint? Well, I mean, that depends on the server objective. Often, on a multiplayer server, you have a bullseye, I guess, where a lot of people fight. You can just kind of look around and see where the furball is, look for specs in the sky. Again, I don't really know where I stand on the issue. Um, I can only admit that, yes, I do have problems spotting various aircraft. But more than that, I think it's identifying friend from foe if there's no... Uh, server map icons or target markers so I spent a lot of time not shooting in attempts to uh, identify and again that's that's part of real aerial combat uh, in times before sophisticated radar systems and other perhaps identification techniques is this guy just got some turbulence here, I think. Oh, oh, that really? That's kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> it's funny that I'm upset that I killed him so fast. There's the parachute. Usually I have trouble with the AI, except this time he was just flying straight. I've noticed that they seem to... ...follow the waypoint and not react to you unless you miss the opportunity. So if I missed him or shot past him... It's possible that... want to do that for too long starting to red out <laughs> um, I mean it's possible if I had a shot past him then he would have gotten behind me and that would have been the end of that and once they're behind you they're really tough to lose and uh, as I've been saying in my DCS videos they don't currently black out or red out um, there was a forum post about things that they are working on in terms of AI development. So the AI will black... Well, they'll mimic a blackout and a red out. It is AI after all. Uh, their flight model, I believe, is going to change. The AI behavior is going to be a lot more realistic. They're not going to cheat anymore. Hopefully. And that's good news because as much as I love multiplayer in games... As a flight novice, um, you know, I want to I want to spend some time in, in single player and create my own missions. I think the mission editor in this title is fantastic. It's very powerful. And, you know, I'd like to create my own missions and just have fun with that without worrying about having to jump into multiplayer all the time just to get an even fight. Not that it's going to be even with my current skill level, but you know what I mean. Anyways, I'm going to see if I can land this bird and call it a day. Landing gear is down, seat gets elevated, which I really love. Makes it easier to land and taxi. I need the bind, actually, is this thing. Land those flaps. I need to figure out how to properly bind that. I'm going to use most of this runway.
Okay. Definitely helps having that nose wheel. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, really hope that you've enjoyed today's look at DCS and the F-86F Saber. Perhaps in the future I can maybe give you a dogfight where the enemy fights back. Well, be careful what you wish for, <laughs> especially with DCS AI, at least for now. I am very excited about the uh, upcoming AI tweaks. But, um, you know, again, if you enjoyed this video, you'd like to show your appreciation by smacking that like button. I'd love that. Um, beyond that, make sure to check out twitch.tv forward slash sidestrafe. I've got a nice archive over there with uh, Bismarck and I playing in the Focke Wolf 190s and discussing the movie Dunkirk. So if you want to give that a listen, I'll have that there for you in the video section. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Always appreciated. And I'll see you on the next one.